Hey everyone, what's up? My name is Ryan, aka Lethal Llama, and today I want to talk to you about Enter the Gungeon, a roguelike, bullet hell, twin stick shooter. Of those three descriptors, I want to focus on roguelike, what that means, and what makes the genre so special and interesting to play, while using Enter the Gungeon as my primary example. For starters, the term roguelike comes from an old game called Rogue, created in the 1980s. It famously featured levels that were generated procedurally and permadeath which means that if you died, you had to start the entire game over. There were no save points, no leveling up that made it easier on each subsequent playthrough. And because the levels were generated procedurally, you couldn't just memorize the level layouts. You had to master the mechanics of the game. The more you played, the more you died. The more you learned, the further you got in the game each time. Jump ahead 30-some years, and we have a slew of great games that take on these characteristics in different ways, called roguelike games. Games like Spelunky and Enter the Gungeon are perfect examples of this modern take on the genre. And if you want an excellent video on Spelunky, check out this video, which partly inspired this one. Also, I know some might consider these games rogue light instead of rogue like, since both games allow you to unlock immediate access to later parts of the game, but I'm going to go ahead and keep calling them rogue like, just to keep things simple. Enter the Gungeon follows four adventurers as they descend into the Gungeon, a constantly evolving bullet hell fortress, to find a gun to kill their past. Due to a cataclysmic event, there are sentient guns and ammo, such as the Bulletkin and the Gun Dead, littering each of the game's chambers, with the sole purpose of stopping you from reaching the bottom of the gungeon. Just like Rogue, Enter the Gungeon features flourish generated procedurally and permadeath. This means that each playthrough will have different enemies to fight, different room layouts, different items and guns, and even different bosses. Of the dozens and dozens of enemies in the game, each has a unique way in which they attack you. Simpler Bulletkin just fire one bullet at a time. Different enemies, like the Gun Nut, have much more complicated and deadly attacks. As you descend further and further into the depths of the gungeon, enemies naturally become stronger and more exotic. The tutorial gives you a basic idea of your skill set. Your defensive capabilities rely almost exclusively on your dodge roll. You're invincible for the first half of the animation, which means that you can roll harmlessly and gracefully through a barrage of bullets, as long as you time it correctly. As useful as it is, you can't simply roll into a roll into a roll and expect not to be damaged. Direction and timing are crucial. Tables can be flipped to block bullets until they break from too much fire. You also have a limited use defensive item called blanks. When activated, all the bullets on the screen are destroyed, and your enemies are knocked back. Useful when you know that a roll isn't going to cut it. And then there are the guns. Lots and lots of guns. From simple pistols, to powerful lasers, to ants, there's a gun for every situation. The random nature of the game means that each playthrough is vastly different. To give you an example, I recorded two of my runs for the Gungeon back to back, with very different results. In the first, I acquired a Ghostbusters inspired proton pack, a shotgun that shoots cuddly things, and a high rate of fire carbine. In my second, I got a reflecting laser, a flash ray that could damage enemies through cover, a weapon called the Gungeon Ant, which lets you spread oil on the floor and then set it ablaze, and a literal beehive, which shoots, well, bees. And that's just some of the guns. Not to mention the variety in enemies and level layout. The coolest part about this genre to me is just learning the game. Each time I enter the gungeon, I don't really know what to expect. You'll often run into new enemy types, which means you'll have to learn a whole new attack pattern. That wouldn't be that big a deal if this were a different genre. But there's permadeath. Make one mistake and you've got to restart completely. Stakes are high. And so a new enemy means the dangerous unknown. And even if you've learned generally what kinds of enemies each floor holds, each time you enter a room, you have to react immediately to tons of variables. What kinds of enemies are there? Are there environmental hazards? Which gun would work best? What part of the room can I use for cover? This all becomes natural with time. Eventually, you learn how the enemies work. You learn which enemy types to prioritize, how to dodge roll perfectly through their attacks, how to avoid getting cornered. But then you enter the next room, and there's an enemy you haven't seen before, and all of that goes out the window. It is exhilarating. You have to use all of your past experience to adapt quickly. And that learning, the trial and error process of dying and dying over and over until you've nailed it, is the bread and butter of the roguelike genre. You aren't learning how to play the levels, you're learning how to play the game. And that's why I haven't been able to put down Enter the Gungeon since I got it. Each new death brings you one step closer to the final boss. Each new room holds a chance of a crazy new enemy. Each chest I open might have some incredibly amazing gun that could make my run. Each new playthrough houses infinite possibilities. And that is it for this video, thank you for watching. Once again, my name is Ryan, aka Lethal Llama, and I'll see you next time.